sends them back down, but here's the heat wave at 119. Rising higher and continuing to climb over the holiday weekend. It looks like
Hey, hey, here we are back here in Goner Records. Uh, it's been two weeks since the last time you saw us. And if you're in Memphis, you just heard a lot of thunder, which means it's time to begin the show. Thunder is bringing in spring. We got a lot of spring-like stuff for you. It's not really very springish, but it's as springy as we get. Uh, what do we got on the show coming up tonight? We got some great stuff. We got gardening with Chaz Butts. No idea what that is, but it sounds intriguing. We have other creatures with Chelly. Again, we've seen her on the show before, and we enjoy her take on you know animals and stuff. I don't know, what, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of outdoor stuff. This is what for your outdoors uh, men and in in, in people in the house. You know, you might want to point out that that's what's going on tonight. Uh, I'm very excited. I had a good interview with a filmmaker named Jason Willis, and we have an entire seven-minute film of his that we're going to show you called Catnip Egress to Oblivion. And I hope that's going to resonate with some of you. It's a great little film, and we had a chance to speak to the filmmaker. Uh, and we got a big announcement tonight. And um, I'm not going to say any more about that either. So um, what else we got? We got another video by Michael Beach. Apparently has nothing else to do but make videos day in and day out. He's constantly barraged with Michael Beach videos. And uh, and we're happy about that. So don't, you know, feel bad about it. And uh, what else we got, man? We just got a lot of crazy looking video stuff. Um, you know, for those of you who, what is it, 8 o'clock, you're not quite stoned enough to find it hilarious, but you're probably drunk enough to find it funny. So we'll move forward with that in mind. What do we got to, well, yeah, Gardening with Chaz is coming up in the next block. So stick around and find out what that's about. Oh, and also, we'll be talking about Record Store Day. Um, what we, I don't know what about it because it just says record store day here, but I'm sure we'll be mentioning it. Probably what's coming out and how we're going to sell these records in the throes of the ends of the, you know, COVID pandemic and whatnot. Oh yeah, of course. And you saw the house band just now. We'll have more of that wind and hair, which was, uh, you know, a bunch of people playing and the old lady with the, the hair dryer thing. I don't understand what that is. Was that just a photograph or was that? No, it was that she moved, right? So that was a video. That was a video. That counts as a video here, by the way. So that, was, that had production value as far as we're concerned. And um, I don't know. I can't really top that. That's been, that's always really cracked me up the first time. Uh, any other business we want to do this first round? Nope. I think we're in good shape. We're here. We're here to, we're here to start the next. We're here to st we have some enthusiastic employees. We're going to start the next set of blocks of videos. You'll see me again, though. And until then, uh, let's start with wind and hair. You're watching Goner Television.
Hey everybody, Butts here. Today I'll be showing you some easy and cheap ways to get your garden started this spring. Suggested wear, long sleeves, jeans, or other kinds of pants. For the love of God, please wear sunscreen, people. Closed toed shoes, and of course, gloves. Here are some materials you need to get started. First, find some cardboard. Then we need some leaves, some soil or compost, mulch, wood, a rake, a spade, scissors, buckets, and of course a plant. Before you start buying all these things, borrow things from friends, ask friends for plants, look around your neighborhood for bagged up leaves or fallen trees that have been sawed in half. This fallen tree a block away from me has provided so much for my garden. I use it in my compost, in my beds, I use it for firewood, and it's all been free. Once you have everything you need, we'll need to find a place in the yard to plant something. For me, I'll be using the alleyway behind my house, which is south facing and gets a lot of sun. Obviously, you can see there are a lot of weeds here. I'm not going to be pulling them all up though. This is easier than you might think. So let's get started. So I want to plant right here and obviously there's a lot of overgrown weeds. I'm going to do selective weeding, um, leave some of these things that have flowers because pollinators like them. So I'm going to take the grass that I want to get rid of for the weeds and then I'm just going to cut right at the base. And then when you're done with that, just toss it right back down. I do this for a few reasons. One, I don't have to use lawn mowers or weed eaters, which use fossil fuels and destroy the hidden ecosystems of these environments. Two, leaving the roots in the soil prevents soil erosion from wind and water and also keeps the subterranean organisms undisturbed. Three, throwing the nitrogen rich material back down followed by our next step of mulch will eventually turn it back into soil. We're gonna take our leaves. Kind of spread them out. After you lay the leaves down, go ahead and lay your cardboard down. Make sure you remove any metal staples that might be in it or any adhesive or plastic. Next, let's do a little soil. We're gonna take the plant. This is the sunflower, everybody. Hello. And then we're gonna just plop it right down on top of the cardboard. Just gonna mulch heavily around it with all that found mulch from the fallen tree. Continue to add more mulch and leaves until the plant is nice and tucked in. Once you've gotten it situated, take some found wood and then place them around the base of the plant to give it more foundation. This also notifies people that there's a plant here and hopefully it won't get trampled. Most important step, don't forget to water it in. Now I'll take you to my front yard and show you how to make a bed there. If you want to apply that same method to a bigger spot, take those leaves you got from your neighbors who bagged them all up for you, put them down in the area that you want, then lay your cardboard down, find some weights, and then take wood that you have also found from neighbors or your own yard. And make a barrier and you have a bed. I'm using both of these methods around my yard. It doesn't look like much now, but hopefully by summer they'll be more full. I'm planting herbs, pollinators, native plants, hopefully things that will come back on their own so I have to do less work. A couple things to remember as you get your garden started. Avoid the use of pesticides, herbicides, lawn mowers, and weed eaters. Two, don't get discouraged if things don't work out. It'll be A-OK -okay, and there's plenty more opportunities. Three, work and share with friends as much as possible. This means time, money, resources, energy, knowledge, all of it. Um, good bonding experience too. And four, most importantly, have fun.
they taunt me. I bought my car from the sleaziest creep in town. It runs behind the gears all grind, the slip ain't mine, and it broke down. I'm a loser, baby, why would you waste your time? So loser, baby, don't even keep on trying. So loser, baby, I ain't even got a dime. All right, so you saw our uh, little record store of the day video there, so now you don't have to call and ask what the hell's going on for record store day. You should know now. <laughs> and you don't have to worry us yes, anymore. Um, secretly, I work hard to make sure that you, uh, you know, get all those releases you want, like, you know, Kenny Loggins at the movies and the... Uh, I don't know what else I saw in there. Oh, there's the good Jonathan Richmond record. That's a... So if you're looking forward to getting those, make sure to just show up that day, and and uh, we'll do our best to get those. Uh, also, I hope you're experts on starting um, plant beds in your yard. That was a good video. And we got lots more stuff coming up, including the next segment, which I'm responsible for. I don't know why I feel like I have to explain this to you. I'm afraid you guys aren't going to understand what's going on, and I'm just going to sit here and over-explain the concept of what I did here. But uh, when I was in, in school in Tucson, uh, there was a, a terrific band in Tucson called the Knockout Pills. And I, you know, through time, went and met uh, most of those guys. And, you know, they were just a good group of people that were always doing creative stuff. And uh, I got to meet Jason Willis, who's a filmmaker, and he made this great film. And when we had the idea for Goner TV, I thought, man, people would love to see his seven-minute short film, Catnip, Egress to, Obsess to Oblivion. Egress to Oblivion. And I did a little interview with uh, Jason, and you'll get to see him talk about the knockout pills a bit, and uh, then we'll watch the movie, and uh, we'll talk to Jason a little more. Uh, for time, I'm just going to show you something real quick. We got to talk a little bit about his bands and the bands going on in Tucson, but since we ran out of time and I had to do some editing, I was going to show you the other Knockout Pills are doing bands like The Freezing Hands and The Resonars, whose album we sell here at the store. And uh, I just thought I'd mention that because we got to talk to extensive, extensively about you know bands going on in Tucson now, and we had to cut a little bit of that for time. And I thought you might like to know about it because it's some good stuff. And now that I've explained it all away, uh, watch the interview I do <laughs> with a forward by me explaining what I'm doing again <laughs> at the opening of the video. So if you haven't figured it out yet, just pay attention to me, who's going to appear on your screen seconds from now. 
You're watching Goner Television. Tonight on Bill of Season Movie, we're going to watch a great short film called Catnip from Egress to Oblivion and talk to its creator, Jason Willis. Willis is a Tucson-based filmmaker and was a member of the great 90s punk band, The Knockout Pills. Here we got to speak to him a little bit the other day via Goner TV satellite. So we're talking to Jason Willis. He's a filmmaker and uh, was a member of The Knockout Pills. How are you doing, Jason? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Hey, we have video from the knockout pills. Let's look at it now. I grew up watching those things. They really showed stuff like that to us in school. Yeah. You know, they like yeah. uh, drug films and the car accident films and things of that nature. Like, right, yeah. Signal 30 and all that. Yeah. Because well, <laughs> for me, like, I really like something weird video. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, like, and I've done some, like, graphic design for them. I did a bunch of box covers. And, like, they would pay in posters and stuff. So I've got a bunch of – anyway, um, so – I had been ordering like their kind of like they they had a couple of things called Mind Benders Volume One and Two and their LSD education films on those and so like I, I and I got those in like ninety two or ninety three whenever whenever they'd come out and so I'd watching them over and over and that was like activated you know that memory of like being a kid and and there was a well, I'm from Lawrence Kansas and there's a company called Centron Films that did educational films and I was in one growing up like a Halloween wow. safety educational film I put it up online. And so everybody's ripped it off and put it all over the place and remixed it and all that shit. But like, I found a copy and transferred it. But like, so that stuff seemed really super present to me, but I'd never thought of this. And I, when the idea came to me, I thought, well, somebody's obviously done this, you know, there's like uh, no, no way that this doesn't exist. Yeah, it's yeah. Like a funny idea. And I just kept looking and looking and nobody had, and I was like, all right, I guess I have to do this. <laughs> that was like the whole impetus for it. But yeah, like they showed those films regularly i mean they're and they were definitely not current up to date mm. oh you know? yeah, yeah they were always on like film strips and old equipment and stuff right. like yeah. all the right. way up when i was in high school in the 80s and, and these things were from the 50s you know and 60s and stuff like that sal minio narrates one that i saw and i'm like sal <laughs> minio like that's how i heard about who he was you know and then like later I'm like oh like, well, that, okay <laughs> It goes by many names. There are approximately 250 species of catnip, and this figure doesn't include hybrids. But all of these substances have one thing in common. The active ingredient, nepotalactone cycloalkane, an essential oil found in the leaves and stem of the plant that causes wildly unpredictable behavior in its users, characterized by hallucinations, illusions, and distortions of both perception and thinking. That's catnip. 
Over the centuries, thousands of things have been written about catnip. In fact, there is even a story of an executioner who would have to chew on the root of catnip so that he could bring himself to kill. But despite the years of combined scientific research, we still do not truly know exactly what it is that catnip does. Not only are the chromosome questions unanswered, but we are still not able to predict in advance whether a catnip user at any particular moment in their life is going to have a good trip or a bad one. This is what catnip looks like. But what can't be seen is where the drug has its real effect in the mind. Those two inches of inner space between the front of the snoot and the back of the cranium. The results are mercurial. Much in the same way that the psychoactive chemicals contained within catnip can be erratic and inconsistent, cats who react to nepotolactone differ in their individual responses. But this much is known. Once ingested, catnip goes off like an atomic bomb within those 300 million neurons sitting inside a cat's cerebral cortex. And just like atomic energy, the results vary wildly from situation to situation. When inhaled or snorted, catnip will stimulate a cat. And once stimulated, users exhibit a range of behaviors that may include sniffing, licking and chewing the plant, as well as head, chin, cheek, and body rubbing. This psychosexual reaction lasts for five to 15 minutes and cannot be evoked again for an hour, at which point the cat may require a higher dose in order to achieve the same degree of intoxication. Some users drool and roll about on the floor. Others become exceedingly hyperactive, and many will become aggressive, picking fights with other cats after their senses have been altered by the drug. When eaten, the herb becomes a powerful sedative, tranquilizing the user to the point of near catatonia and making it more difficult for them to effectively react to situations within their environment. Otherwise normal felines may react to catnip doses by seeing strange patterns of wildly moving lights. Time may appear to stand completely still, and colors, shapes, smells, tastes, textures, the whole range of things that can be seen, heard, touched, and tasted take on other distortions that can appear completely and utterly real. After several years of research, we have determined that there are many similarities between the catnip experience and schizophrenia. However, our current opinion about catnip is that it works as more of an amplifier, a catalyst, that amplifies the psyche and mental state of the user. And what of the user's mental state? Due to the almost infinite variables, it is absolutely unpredictable as to who will have a bad experience or when they will have it. But everyone who takes catnip, even its most vocal supporters, admit that there is always the risk of a bad trip, a bummer, or even a flip out. It can be a real kick, or it can be a kick in the head. The head. The user may see distorted beauty or may tumble into a private hell. The most dangerous act can seem attractive and easy to accomplish. In a bad trip, instant insanity, a never-never land of seemingly no return. For every good trip, there are risks as well. Nepotolactone flashbacks and hallucinations can occur after the original dose, and the user may not even know what is happening. The drug is easy to procure, and catnip dealers can be found peddling their wares in almost any major city, selling the substance in equal doses to both the experienced user and the novice. And since there is no regulation on catnip, it's impossible to predict the dosage or to know if the drug has been cut with sawdust, hay, or other mystery fillers used by unscrupulous dealers to beef up its bulk and color. The nip may be dirty or contaminated, and by the time the user finds out, it's too late to turn back. <coughs> Consider this cat. Chances are that she will get well again, well enough to leave the tub. But whether she will ever truly be the same again, have the same personality, the same ambitions, the same drive to hunt, to love, to get along with others, that 
we won't know for a long time. In the end, it may be that with catnip, too much is unknown. The answers aren't all in yet, and research continues. But is the risk worth it? That's a question every cat will have to answer for themselves. Like, how did you get so many cats to act? I can't believe, believe it. The range of cat acting in that movie is mind-blowing. That's right. You're a cat acting enthusiast. You're yeah, I am a cat. A I do actually enjoy good cat acting. So Yeah. yeah. Well, certainly with my own cats, I, I already knew their proclivities, and so I just built the script around stuff that I knew they were going to do anyway. She rolls in the bathtub all uh -huh. the time I, it's yeah. like a little trick she's showing me you know and so i was like well I'll definitely just build that in um yeah. and then hawthorne my other cat the one who was just kind of like pawing at the window and all that stuff yeah. these are just like things that i've observed them doing in general <laughs> yeah. you know and i was like all right let's just i mean it already seems pretty you know whacked out and, and if you watch any of those old drug education films i mean you know you see like the crazy behavior that they do is always sort of along those lines so it was pretty easy to oh it's amazing know, I meant to say, you went all the way to Sundance with this movie, huh? Yeah, it's bananas. I mean, and Slam Dance happens at the same time, and so there's a lot of cool stuff there, too. Oh, really? Yeah, the, the, the first thing that happened was I played it at the local theater here, The Loft. They've got this thing called First Friday Shorts, where you mm -hmm. do, like, a competition. And, and it was the first time I'd ever even been there. And, like, and I, I'd never really made you know much of a film or anything before. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just kind of messed around with other stuff. And so I took it there. And it got a, it won the night and got a good reaction. And it was up against another really good one too. And so I think we were tied and then we went up and there was like a, like an applause meter type deal, wow. and, you know, and I think actually even that was tied and I won like a coin toss or something. I mean, it was not like a lock, you know, <laughs> Do you remember or, the other film or what it was. Or it was, was it, it was something local and it was something where somebody was obsessed with French cinema. And so they were kind of turning into somebody from, you know, the sixties French cinema, you know, like every time they'd look at their hand, there was a cigarette. It would appear and that kind of stuff you know it was, it was good it was not bad yeah i wouldn't have been disappointed if they'd you know, mm. taken the cake and then like uh i put it online and then i just started getting hit up because i didn't do any promotion because i'm not smart enough to know how to do it and so uh afi hit me up and asked me if i wow. wanted to like just show it uh, they're like, well, wave the fee. And I was like, maybe this is normal, but I found out it was not. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. so I I went to AFI and showed it there. And the weirdest thing that happened was like I I well, I mean, not the weirdest, but one of the weird things that happened was, like, as soon as I went into the urinal, like, Steven Spielberg came up right next to me. Oh, my God. Me. Wow. <laughs> it was like taking a fifth audience award at Sundance for That's best crazy. short film. And it cost, like, 25 bucks, 35 bucks to make that. I mean, all the only money I spent was on catnip. You know, yeah. it was, it was no <laughs> <good budget. laughs> yes, like, that was it. What else am I going to, you know, I constructed all those goofy things with just stuff lying around my house. You know, it's like a, anyway. Glad you mentioned that because I did not think to ask you the catnip budget. <laughs> the outrageous catnip budget for that film. Man.
look at this studio filled with glamorous prizes, fabulous and exciting merchandise, including this awesome $24,000 Back in the alley. Yes. Here we are. We took the place of Billups for a special announcement. Two of us to take the place of one Billups. We do. <laughs> we can't do it on our own. That's right. But uh, yes, big big announcement, big news. Gonerfest is back. They said it couldn't be done. They said it shouldn't be done. We said it would happen anyway. It's happening. It's happening, people. We're gonna do it uh, safely. Semi sanely, semi the samely, something like that. Works. I think that works. So yeah, you see, so you got. There's going to be an actual physical Goner Fest this year. We're going to do a streaming version as well, trying to take care of everybody. Uh, but it's happening. So we've got more news coming. Thank you to our buddy Jeff Mahana for kicking out some amazing artwork for us. Uh, and there's more coming. And uh, um, thanks to Pat and Vanna for entertaining us for so many years absolutely uh, absolutely um, let's see stop drop shut them down set up shop what's the next line open up shop, open up shop. come on anyway. <laughs> anyway uh dmx is not playing goner fest sorry sorry oh. to say that too soon too yeah. soon but, um, yeah, we're excited. So uh, we'll have information on tickets and uh, exactly what's been going to happen as soon as we figure out that ourselves. We're working on it, though. Yeah. It's coming. It's so, coming. So uh, if you want to start making plans to be here, uh, the dates were um, on there, which are not September, coming to. <laughs> September 23rd through 26th, I think. Yeah. It's the Thursday through Sunday. We're doing the. You know. Doing it's the, the regular, last weekend in September. You know. Regular deal. So. Hope to see you here. If you can't make it, we'll catch you next year. We'll see you online. We'll uh, have lots of fun stuff online as well. So, uh, Goner Fest, yeah. Going to be fun. All right, uh, I think we're rolling into uh, some more magic action from Goner TV. Michael uh, Beach. Yes, we've got another uh, new new uh, video from Michael Beach. He made it just a minute ago. <laughs> just finished. And uh, Shelly. <laughs> Shelly. Uh, you cannot stop Billups and his heckling. Do not even try. That's right. Michael's going to come all the way back over here. Drop a hammer. Yeah. And uh, we've got Shelly doing a, 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 a new uh, nature, natural creatures. Uh, it's more wind and hair. Oh, I can't wait for some hair. more wind and hair. So, yeah. So let's do it. Michael Beach, I believe. Hit it, Ron. Yeah, 
Welcome back to another episode of Other Creatures. I've always been interested in abandoned lots in neighborhoods or lots that have been for sale for years. Um, sort of land that isn't seen as having any value until it's developed on or it's seen as a blight to the neighborhood or as deserted, um, as empty of life. I don't really think it's that empty, uh, actually. And uh, there's one of these lots about half a block from my house. Um, let's go check it out and see what we find. Here we are, let's see who's living here. neighborhood or as deserted, um, as empty of life. I don't really think it's that empty, uh, actually. And uh, there's one of these lots about half a block from my house. Um, let's go check it out and see what we find. Here we are. Let's see who's living here. There was also tons of common vetch and violet. Other plants seen include purple dead nettle, field matter, chickweed, chervil, fleabane, speedwell, cleaver, geranium, shepherd's purse, henbit, and medic. Other animals that I saw but couldn't record include northern flicker, common grackle, blue jay, Carolina wren, wolf spider, bumblebee, and house sparrow. There was also a whole bunch of crane flies, paper wasps, a cabbage white butterfly, a ton of leaf hoppers and little gnats, and an assassin bug. I was coming back to the lot today um, to see what else I could find, but looks like uh, it's been completely mowed. Um, perhaps a well-meaning neighbor or the city, but um, a bummer because everything that I showed you yesterday is gone. Maybe we can find a few things in this brushy area in the back of the lot that wasn't touched. It looks like it could be some sort of moth pupa.
Hey, how about that? That was Stacy Keel that just did that time lapse drawing and did it throughout the show. I think it came out real well, don't you? It's a cool picture. Also, I must say that Michael Beach video was really cool. And then he didn't make that one himself. Who was I, I forgot the name of the Sophia uh, Sophia Mero did the animation for that. Man, that was cool too. And it was a good song. Uh, and we had Zach and Eric making the Goner Fest 18 announcement. So I hope that answers some of your questions. Uh, it's r uh, raised some for me, but, uh, at least, you know, it's happening, right? Like, um, and furthermore, this is our last, uh, we're getting no sound. Can you hear me at all? Is it you that can't hear me or n nobody can hear me? What if I talk louder? That, that may have been a joke. Somebody just said that out. So. Am I in? Do I need to say all that again? or do? You've been hearing me? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know what to say about that. I bet they're kidding. Actually, if they'd said that, we wouldn't know, would they? Where am I? Well, what do you want me to do? Just... Just keep going, okay. So to to sum up, Stacy K. La time lapse, Michael Veach video, good. Uh, Goner Fest eighteen announcement. Uh, that was all I said just now. So I guess we're getting ready to say good night. Uh, we'd also like to thank Chaz Butts for the gardening tips, and uh, 
Chelly for the uh, uh, creature, other creatures show. That's her. Was that her second one here? Is that really great stuff? Hope we have her back. Uh, I think that's very uh, fun to look at. I'd like to thank Wind and Hair for the uh, band. Uh, band the what do you call that? The Tonight's Band, the the Night Show Band. They are the band tonight. House the band, band. The, the the yeah the house band. Uh, and what else? Do, oh, of course, Jason Willis, both for his great film and his patience. Uh, that was my first, you know, sort of pasted together interview in this forum. So I uh, hope you got something out of that, and I hope you'll check out Jason Willis's website and see some of the other great stuff he's doing. He has that great uh, something weird aesthetic, like some of us like. So you want to check him out. And I mentioned, I think I mentioned everybody. That was it. It was a great show. It was a lot of fun just seeing videos, like driving in a car. You're just watching stuff whiz by. If you're in the passenger seat and you're not driving, you know, you're not really responsible for anything. You're just seeing what, what comes along. I, I kind of had fun with that. So what do we go? So, oh, yeah, next week, right? So we are... We're gonna tr- we're gonna do it. We're gonna try to do the game show again. We're gonna have a round two of did they really? And uh, this is a good time for you to write in. Where would they write in for something like this? They're gonna. They're, well, first they're gonna follow the Garner or sorry the Garner TV Instagram. Follow the oh, follow the Garner TV Instagram, and we're gonna put that's new. By the way, <laughs> we didn't have that before. Brand- it's it's up there on Instagram, and uh, if you want to be a contestant on the next episode of Did They Really, you can win, you know, some things, and um, we're going to be asking you questions. It's going to be like a game show. We did it once before, and we're going to try to sharpen it up this time, and we're determined to do that and other fun things on the next episode of Goner TV. Anything else you have ideas for the next episode? Mike? Michael Beach working on a new video for this one. He's got it coming up. I'm going to give Cole a haircut. Yeah, we're going to give Cole, our our, our uh, resident cashier, a haircut. And that's the first I heard of that, but that sounds fun. I've said nice things about Michael Beach's work and, and the work around his art tonight. I'm just, well, whatever. Uh, it's only because I saw his name on here a couple of times. And, uh, man, I had fun tonight. I'm a little, I seem a little jagged, but I'm having fun. So uh, continue to have fun tonight and uh, try to keep the party going for two more weeks. You'll see us back here uh, with more fun stuff. And I guess that leaves me to say good night and take it away one more time with wind and hair. You've been watching Goner TV. Thanks a lot.
then by the river it's cold at night Find it hard to forgive her even though I try